Hello, fellow overcomers. We are gonna get to praying. We are gonna we are gonna get to praying in a moment, in a few moments, for the USA, for the United States of America. Uh, hallelujah. We're gonna get there momentarily. Okay. If you're in, if, if, if you're watching this, please drop a comment. Drop a comment. Say hello on your screen. Gamar Chatima Tova. That is the Yom Kippur greeting right there. Gamar, Gamar Chatima. No, excuse me. It's Gamar Hatima Tova. That's the that's the greeting. Okay, and right there is the meaning of the Yom Kippur greeting. Gemara Hatima Tova means may you be sealed in the book of life. Isn't that interesting? Isn't, isn't that something? Uh, on Yom Kippur, on the Day of Atonement, that's the greeting, and the well wishes isn't happy Yom Kippur, okay? Like other other uh, 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 um, other festivals, it's like Happy New Year, Happy Passover, you know, Happy First Fruits, whatever. But this one, the well wishes is, may you be sealed in the Book of Life. And isn't that interesting? Okay, which you know something. If you put your faith in the high priest, okay, guess what? If you put your faith in the high priest, you confess your faith in the high priest. Then guess what? You will be sealed in the book of life because the high priest isn't a Levite. The high priest is our Lord and Savior, Jesus. All right. So what an appropriate greeting. Now, there's lots of videos out there, good videos actually, that that teach on Yom Kippur. I'm right here on this platform that you're watching on right now live. I touched on that earlier in the morning. I encourage you. I encourage you to check that out. But one one undercurrent theme about all this, about the about this day. Once again, this day is not about our efforts. It's not about our works, okay? It really isn't. Um, traditionally, people that celebrate this in the tra traditionally will traditionally fast for 24 hours. If you do or don't, whatever, okay? Because when you look at the, when you look at the celebration of this, it is about a nation putting their faith in the high priest to present an acceptable, pleasing sacrifice to the Lord. That's what this is. That's, a, that's the thing. A whole nation putting their trust in the high priest. And was that fulfilled? It definitely was because you know what? Our Messiah, he is the only sacrifice. How you doing, Jason? Yeshua is the only sacrifice acceptable. He's the only acceptable sacrifice. And he's the only high priest. He is the only high priest that could present that sacrifice. So yeah, back in those days, back in those days, that that you know, that forgiveness, that atonement just covered a nation for a year, but this, the you know, what it fulfilled covers people. It doesn't just cover people. The blood of bulls and goats just covered people for a period of time. But the blood of Yeshua cut, washes away the sin. Hallelujah. As far as the east is from the west. So, you now, if you didn't, if you didn't watch my, if you didn't watch my video this morning, I touched on that. Uh, you know, please check it out. If not, once again, 
There's lots of good, there's lots of good teachers, lots of good presentations already online. Yes, there are actually good beneficial things on the internet. Okay. <laughs> they, they, you know, good content does exist. All right. So, okay, I've been out here for a few minutes and all that. So just to, you know, um, just a couple of things here, you know, like I've mentioned, there's people all over the nation that are leading that are leading corporate prayer for you know for the nation. And you know, they're doing it right now. Um I know for me personally, the Lord had it in my heart all the way back from Yam Tarura last, you know, a little over a week ago, last week, Monday night, to really hone in on, on the uh the political submitting to the prophetic. Okay, hallelujah. And that's the way it's supposed to be. The, you know, the people, the people, the, the people, the most high, we're the ones that are responsible. We're the ones that are in charge. We're the ones that got, that has to hold, that has to hold the particular government accountable. Okay. Because we're, once we're born again, we are ambassadors. Oh, wait a minute. All things pass away and all things come new. This was something I touched, this was something I touched on in these last few days also. You know, you can you can check it out right there in the videos. Um, all things pass away and all things become new. When we were born, when we were born with this with the sin conscious, we were born a citizen of whatever country we were in. When we're born again, we now have the Christ conscious, we're a brand new person in, in Messiah. And now we are citizens of the kingdom. Which means the country that we reside in, we are now ambassadors. And what do ambassadors do? Ambassadors of a country are there to make sure that the interests of the country that they're representing are being met. You know, we're, you know, we're just making sure. So we definitely are here we definitely are here. Hey, Harrell, brother Harrell, great to see you. Praise the Lord. Um, we are here to enforce the interests of the kingdom. We are here to enforce the victory that 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 that, that uh, Yeshua won two thousand years ago. And everybody coming in, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna put this up in here again, right there. What you see. What you see right there are the greetings for Yom Kippur, okay? The greetings from Yom Kippur, may you be sealed in the book of life. That's what the, the Hebrew you know, means, okay? So every when I see people joining in, hey, David, how you doing? How you doing? When I see people join in, I'm going to do my best to pop up in there. That's greetings for everybody. May you be sealed in the book of life, okay? That's the book you want to be in. All right. Hallelujah. You don't want to be in these Harlequin novels. You don't want to be in these horror stories. You don't want to be in these children's fairy tales. OK, you don't even want to you don't want to be in no crime novel, or anything like that. All right. You, you don't want to be in no comic book. You want to be in the book of life. So anyway. Anyway. Um, last week, Monday. When I was doing Yom Teruah or what's popularly known as Rosh Hashanah, I was in Nehemiah 8 and we saw how the government, Nehemiah being the governor and Ezra being the high priest of that day, we saw how the government, we saw how, you know, the kingdom was working together with the government. We saw actually how the government was following the lead of the kingdom, okay? The government was following the lead of the high priest. And all, you know, these few days, okay, this is what we're missing. We, this is what we need. We need to see righteousness, you know, manifest in the government, okay? It's been, it's been a slow drip, and it seems like the drip's gotten faster in the last 60 years, okay? 
but we need to see righteousness restored in the government. And on that end, that's what we're going to, you know, that's what we're going to pray. Okay. Um, first Timothy two, the first four verses. Okay. Or well, I should say, you know, the first six verses. All right. I'm in the NLT, the new living translation. All right. I urge you, this is Paul writing to Timothy. Okay. And really applies to us. I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. All people didn't just say all believers. Hey, we even give thanks for non-believers too. You know, there's been some great inventions that have come out of non-believers. There have been non-believers in government positions who for whatever reason, they didn't choose to receive, you know, you know, Jesus as Lord, but they did choose to step back and allow and, and allow us, the ecclesia, the messianic community, the church. There were non-believers in, in leadership positions that have allowed us to freely do what we need to do, what we're called to do. So, you know, we give thanks for them. Verse two, pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. Whew. This is good and pleases God our savior who wants everyone to be saved and understand the truth. Why? Verse five, because there is one God and one mediator who can reconcile God and humanity. The man, Christ Jesus, he gave his life to purchase freedom for everyone. So look at this here. If we're not praying for our, for not, for our government, if we're not praying for people in general, number one, if we're not praying for kings, that's heads of states, number two, if we're not praying for all who are in authority, all who are in authority, that doesn't just mean government, okay? That also means all who are in authority in education, all who are in authority in business, and dare I say, all in authority in the household, in families. Let me, let me drop this here. The law is summed up in one commandment, you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. Well, guess what? If you love your neighbor as yourself, if you love your neighbor as yourself, you're gonna be praying for your neighbor. You're gonna be lift up your neighbor in prayer. Hallelujah. You're definitely gonna do that. You're definitely gonna do that. So just a little something before we really get started praying. You know, now that I set the table right here a little bit, okay, I know, and I don't know how long this broadcast is gonna last. But just a little something here, all right? Number one, you pray as you know how. Of course, we are praying in the name of Jesus Christ, okay? And we are praying his perfect will for this country, okay? So we're going to be joining, we're essentially going to be joining and coming in agreement with a lot of our brothers and sisters in repenting for America's sins, okay? We're definitely gonna be doing that, number one. Number two, as you're praying, as I'm praying, whatever, as long as you know we're in agreement in Jesus, all right? As long as we're in agreement with Jesus, you know, pray as you're led, all right? Listen up and join in, okay? So you know what you're agreeing with, but, you know, pray as you know, okay? Now, me, I pray in the Holy Ghost. I pray in other tongues. I pray in other languages as, as, as the Spirit gives me utterance, okay? 
And there's, there, there's a number of you watching that do the same thing. But there's plenty that, that want to join in and don't believe in tons or whatever. Well, guess what? Tons or no tons is not a prerequisite to be in agreement here. Okay? So you, you be in agreement as the spirit leads. You pray at El as the spirit leads. But our focus is on, we're putting our narrow focus here. I mean, the world needs prayer, yes. And, and Lord willing, over the next 24 hours, as he leads me, I'm just going to get out and do it. But, uh, but, uh, we need it right here at home. We really do. We really need this right here in our house. Hallelujah. So I just laid it out. First Timothy two. First Timothy two. First six verses. That's our focus. And that's been our focus. Hallelujah. There's been an even greater focus as far as, you know, government, not just the federal government, but the state's governments and, you know, the local, you know, the, the various municipalities. I mean, we've seen some things going on, you know, whether whether it be uh, whether it be a uh, 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 questionable foreign policy, whether it be uh, a handling, a handling of a pandemic. OK, um, whether, you know, whether it be how we uh how we treat people who really can't defend themselves and i'm talking about i'm i'm talking about the very elderly and i'm talking about the the ones in the womb yes i said it okay yes i said it all right but you know we need you know we need to be walking in obedience to the script to, to the word as a nation the old testament the majority of the old testament if you really look at it is filled with israel with a nation that went back and forth vacillated okay all right yeah yo they vacillated between worshiping false idols you know whether they obey god or not and at some point the lord the lord was like forget this and allowed and allowed them to be conquered allowed them to get the bondage then at some point they repented and the lord showed mercy and and they got free again that's the old testament the majority of the Old Testament, that's a big part of it. You could even go all the way back. Oh, my Lord. Now, our Father is no respecter of persons. All right. Thank you very much for putting that up there, David. Thank you very much. First, six, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, especially the first six verses. But I'm going to keep that up there for a few, for a couple minutes. Thank you very much. Because there's going to be people that are going to catch this on the replay. Hallelujah. But anyway, anyway, our Father in heaven is no respecter of persons. So of one nation, if Israel, the apple of his eye, you know, his covenant people in the Old Testament, the nation where Messiah was born into when he came into when he uh you know when, when when he came in the flesh when he came through the virgin mary if the lord allowed that to happen as far as as far as uh uh whether a nation uh obey was in obedience or disobedience what makes us think that we're so special okay i mean you know, we just we just commemorated the 25th anniversary of 
this past weekend, okay? We just commemorated that, all right? Now, do you think that was just like, oh boy, that 9-11, however it happened or who did it, that 9-11 didn't happen because America was, you know, was so preaching the gospel. Hey, Vicky, America was so preaching the gospel and that was persecution. No, no, no. You know, it's like, it's like doors, okay? Every day, you and I open doors and close doors, literally, okay? If you leave the house every day, you're opening and closing doors, Okay. If you're living with somebody else and you and you know you have your own bedroom or you know your own bathroom, whatever, you're opening and closing doors every day. Okay. But maybe you don't leave the house. Maybe you maybe you're not living with anybody else. Okay. So you don't have to have that privacy right there. But you know what? If you're going in the kitchen, if you're going to if you're going to brush your teeth, okay, you're going in the cupboard, whatever. If it's a cabinet door, a closet door, a cupboard door, you know what? You're opening and closing doors. It's just a fact of life. In the physical, you're opening and closing doors. And of course, that happens in the spiritual. Obedience, obedience to the to, to, to the things of to, to the things of, of the Lord, obedience to scripture. Okay. That open door for the blessings to manifest in your life. And that closes the door for curses to manifest in your life. Okay? The blessing manifests in your life when you open up the door through obedience. And when you open the door through obedience, you're closing the door for curses. Okay? Because blessing and curses can't be in the same, can't be in the same place. It's one or the other. So if you if you're obeying God in one thing. You're opening up the door for blessings to reside in that one thing. And you're simultaneously, you're simultaneously closing the door for curses. So obedience opens the door for the blessing to manifest. Disobedience opens the door for curses, for, for the curse to manifest. Okay? It's going to be one or the other. Deuteronomy 28 very good example right there. If you're obeying God, Deuteronomy 28, there's like 14 verses. If you're obeying God, all this will happen. Life is simple. You're in the blessing. If you disobey God, Lord have mercy. You got some 50 verses. You got some 50, 60 verses of what happens when you walk in, when you walk in disobedience. The curse happens. And it's just a long list. And it's just, a, oh, man. Oh. So we want the blessing to not only rest on the United States of America, we want the United States of America to experience the manifested blessings in every area of our lives, okay? We want a strong family unit to dominate America, okay? We want we want strong word churches, strong churches that will boldly proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, free you know freely operating in this you know in, in in our country. We want we want schools that are going to teach what they're supposed to teach, that are not going to teach, that are not going to teach, that are not going to indoctrinate, that are not going to social engineer our children. But they're going to teach our children the things, the basics and the things that they need to be taught to function, to thrive, to dominate in the world they were created to live in. All right. That's what we want in this country. We want a government that will make laws, just laws, moral laws, according to according to the scriptures and according to the Constitution. OK. We want, we want law enforcement that will justly, you know, enforce the laws, okay? And that, you know, they will enforce the laws in a way to where 
they will they will once again be respected like like they should be okay we don't we want a judicial system that will judge accordingly you know you know that will judge righteously all right we need righteousness all the way through in all levels and all fabrics of, of our society of our country hallelujah and a lot of that is going to be brothers and sisters actually assuming uh, assuming these positions okay that's going to be a big part of it hallelujah Another big part of it will be that it will be believers actually decide to vote according to according to what's what thus says the Lord instead of whatever tickles whatever tickles their flesh or whatever they're told to say. Hallelujah. So this is what we need. I, man, I've been out here for almost half an hour, but it's like I want you to know what we're, what you're coming into agreement with. Okay, I want you to know what you're, you know, what you know, what you're coming into agreement with. Okay, I want you to know that you don't just come into agreement with it, just anything. And yes, I, I'll confess, I'm also guilty of swiping by the terms and conditions when I download an app or something like that, because they kind of really say the same thing, but still, but still. I, I got to work on that one too, but especially spiritually speaking, especially you entering into a contract, into a government, you better know the terms and you come into agreement right here. All right. I want you to know what you're in agreement with. Okay. Um, and once again, I'm just going to go back up to here. Okay. This is the focus. First Timothy two verses one through six. All right. We are praying for men, all you know, mankind all over. We are praying for all of our leaders inside and outside of government, in the education system, in corporate America, and in the families. That's what we're doing. So once again, pray. And once again, if you if you know how to pray in tongues, definitely do that. If you don't believe in tongues or don't whatever, you pray as you're being led to. But the important thing is, is that we're in agreement. That's the important thing. We are in agreement hallelujah so let's uh let's get started shall we let's let, let let's let's boldly go to the throne of grace hallelujah this ain't this ain't the old covenant anymore it ain't just the high priest that can go into the holy of holies our high priest made a way so we all can go boldly to the throne of grace and and, and approach our father in heaven hallelujah let's do it heavenly father i just we just come to you right now in the name of 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 our of your firstborn from the dead and our lord and big brother jesus christ yeshua our messiah we just come to you right now we're giving you all the praise all the glory and all the honor that's due to you hallelujah you qualified us to be partakers in this kingdom and you did that because your, your, your son, Jesus, decided to submit his life to not only be the sacrifice for sin, but to also be the high priest that could present that sacrifice so that you would accept it. We thank you for that. He has made a way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like the veil's been open, the veil was opened up after 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 our Lord said it is finished. The veil was opened up, and now we are a kingdom of priests. We can all we can go in. All of us who have put our trust in the Lord, all of us who believe that you raised him from the dead, all of us who confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord, Yeshua is King, to Adonai. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you, Father. You are slow to anger. You are quick to show mercy. You are rich in mercy. 
for you are good and your mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just plead the blood of Jesus over the United States of America right now. We plead the blood of Jesus. And there's us that are out here right now praying, but we know we're not the only ones out here praying live. We know we're not the only ones praying here um, after, you know, on the replay. Hallelujah. And we know we're not the only ones that pray that 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 pray on a regular basis concerning concerning the, the United States. We join in agreement with all of our other brothers and sisters all over that are praying your will, that are praying your perfect will over the United States of America right now. We join in agreement with everybody else who is coming to you and standing in the gap right now and humbly ask you to forgive the United States. Not just talk about people that are in Washington, D.C. or various states capitals or anything like that. Talk about us also because after all, we voted them in. Most of them, I should say. We allowed this to happen. We allowed the people to assume office. We allowed the people to be elected in office. Why we even allow people to be in office that have no business being in office. But we've allowed it. You know, our, you know, our Lord, Lord Jesus said in Matthew 28, when he, get, when he was giving us the great commission that all power and authority was given unto him, and then he conferred that authority right to us. So at the end of the day, the buck stops here. Forgive us, please. Forgive us, please, for allowing this country to be in the state that it's in right now. Forgive us, please, for allowing the deterioration of the, of, of the moral social fiber, the way it's deteriorated. Forgive us, please. Forgive us, please, for not being as active as we're supposed to be Representing the representing the uh, our kingdom, as far as proclaiming the gospel, healing you know, healing the sick, loving our neighbor the way we're supposed to love him, having our minds set on heavenly things, and not allowing earthly things to be distract to distract us. Like our favorite political party, our favorite politician, our favorite entertainer, our favorite sports team, our favorite, uh, uh, our, our favorite band, even our favorite, favorite preacher. Forgive us, please. And also, while we're at it, even though we're in authority and even though we allowed it. Everybody walking this earth has their own free will. Lord, uh, these people that are in high positions, they, they don't know what they're doing. Forgive them, please. Please, please still extend mercy. Hallelujah. There's just some things that were prophesied in, in, in the scriptures that we're not going to be able to undo. We can't pray those away. But you did say in your scripture, you did say that we have to, that we have to, we need to pray for all men. You did say we need to pray for all kings and all people in authority. And you said that so that everyone can be saved. 
and everyone can have a proper, clear understanding, a proper, clear revelation of the truth. Because we only have one high priest. We only have one mediator between you and, 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 and mankind. And that's Yeshua Messiah. That's Christ Jesus, our Lord. Oh, hallelujah. They didn't know what they were doing. And even if they had knowledge, they don't know. They, they, can't, they, they, they can't know about the eternal consequences. They're being deceived. They're being deceived. Have mercy on them, please, Father. Have mercy on them, please, as you send laborers across their path that will be bold in, in proclaiming the gospel, that will be bold in praying, in, in praying for them, that will be bold to have to listen with ears of the spirit as well as with ears of the flesh. Hallelujah. Because you still have the words to give us. You still promise to give us words to say at the right time. Thank you, Father. And thank you for having mercy on us. Hallelujah. Thank you for having mercy on us as we grow, as we make an even more aggressive attempt to grow and mature in, in, in kingdom things, in coming to a unity of the knowledge of the firstborn from the dead. Not the only begotten, because Jesus did it all. He was raised from the dead. See, he's the firstborn. And we're born after that. We're born again after that. Father, I also ask you for I also ask you for I also ask you to for, for you for forgiveness for the for all for all the foolishness, the corruption that's been happening inside of the body. Forgive us. Please forgive us, please, for the all, all the false prophecies going out. They had no business going out. Forgive us, please, for all for all the people that are that are coming out and, and, and talk about your name to try to put a buck in their pocket to try to pad the bank account. Forgive us, please, for not focusing wholeheartedly on you and your, and, and your ways, but for being distracted by what, our, by what our favorite political party is, by what the news is saying, by, oh, Lord, by what we hear so-and-so saying, by what we see without you know with our money with the, what our what, a, what you know what our jobs say what our peers are saying please for, forgive us please for that forgive us for running around it's one thing to it's one thing to proclaim what happens and to sound and to sound the alarm as far as what what possibly coming down the pike so that we can know how to pray against it and know what to do but father we're supposed to be known for your goodness we're supposed to be known as children of the light we're supposed to be known for our love toward the brother You told us in the Gospel of John to love one another so that the world may know that we're your disciples. 
That's what we're supposed to be doing. But it seems like we've come to be known for either pushing either pushing bogus conspiracy theories or be known for pointing out the wrong and the error in other people's ways. We're supposed to be known as children of love. We're supposed to be the most loving people on this earth. We're supposed to be, Father, you intended us. You sent down, you gave us, you promised us the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit can lead us and guide us to be such loving people. So loving that people would think that when they see us, they see Jesus. That's how it's supposed to be. But we've allowed ourselves, we've allowed ourselves to be something else, to act a different way. And forgive, I, I, we ask on behalf, uh, forgive us please, Father. Because how, how are these unsaved people supposed to act right when those of us who are saved aren't always acting right? And we really have no excuse. Forgive us, please, Father. Forgive us, please. Oh. <laughs> oh. You just allowed me to do a little chuckle there. Because people have their people have their versions and their interpretations of scripture, but it still is written in 1 John 1:7. That if we come to you confessing our sins, that you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins, and the blood and the blood of Jesus washes away, cleanses away all unrighteousness. Now we know we're in right standing with you because it's it it's 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 the it, it's Jesus' righteousness and not ours. He gave us the righteousness. We are we already are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So we know that, we know that, but we also know that you told us to transform our minds, offer up our bodies as a reasonable act of worship and transform our minds, our will, our emotions. You told us to do that and you gave us the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us and empower us to, help, to do just that. So, I'm sitting, you know, we sitting here confessing, you know, confessing sins, asking for forgiveness, but we're not coming from a position that Israel used to come from before, before Messiah first came. We come from a position that Messiah came once, he's coming back again. Hallelujah. But the sac the, but the offense of sin's been removed in the, from the world. We come to you as kings and priests. We come to you as children of yours. Hallelujah. 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 What you were saying, what, what you, what you uh, instructed Paul to write to Timothy and really write to us when it comes to praying for others and praying for leaders that was a formula for revival. We need revival in this land. But there's got to be there's got to be people that are going to be open up the open up the door of revival and that's only through obedience and I just thank you for giving us the desire and the ability to do just that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We need revival throughout this country we need revival in the homes we need we need man and we need a man and a woman to get together and be married according to your will and then have children according to your will and raise those children according to the according to your ways we need that fabric right there restored we need revival there 
We need revival in the education. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need you back. We need you honored in education again. In the daycare, pre-kindergarten, kindergarten, grade school, junior high, middle school, high school, and universities. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to be, we need, we need to see revival. We need a restoration to your rightful place in education. Hallelujah. And through those two things, the family and with education, with that revival happening, of course, that's going to spill out in government. We're going to have people that know how to rule and reign in leadership positions, in the government, in law enforcement, in the marketplace. Hallelujah. And what a, what a strong place we'll be when we want to minister to the world. I know there's, I know stuff is happening right now and I'm not just going to limit my, you know, what I, my, I'm not going to be limited to what I see with my natural eyes and what I hear with my natural ears. Cause I know that in some of these, that, you know, some of these countries and some pockets of, you know, of America, there actually is revival fires being burnt right now, being blazing, but, but, I plead the blood of Jesus. I just don't, I, I don't just want fire here, fire there. I want that engulfing fire, like in the for, like in the like in the forest, to when it catches a blaze, and at some point, nobody can put it out. Hallelujah! That's the fire that that that's the fire that I want to see. That's the fire I want to be a part of. That's the fire that that need that that needs to engulf the United States of America. That type of fire that puts bars out of business, that puts strips clubs out of business, that puts that you know that 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 puts that puts a planned parenthood out of business, that puts that you know that puts a escorts and prostitution and, and the CD massage parlors out of business. That type of revival fire that uh, that uh, effectively ends por you know, por uh, pornography from being so rampant, hallelujah, that type of revival fire, mm, that type of revival fire, the revival fire that would eventually lead us back to the book of Acts to where we were meeting not just one day a week, not just two days a week, for just a couple of hours, but meeting in public and meeting in private every day. Because we love you and we love each other so much. And the world will see that we are your disciples and the world will see Jesus and receive him. That's what this is all about. That's what this is all about. And you wanted this country to be a country to where we can freely enjoy the freedom that Jesus bought for us a couple thousand years ago. So we want revival. Hallelujah. We call, we 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 walk in we walk in repentance, and we want revival. And you said in your word that if we ask anything in accordance to your will, that you hear us, and we know that if you hear us, we will have what we ask for. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Whoo. Thank you, Lord. We have faith in you. Whoo. 
we know we have this. Hallelujah. He also said in the Gospels, he also, he also said that if two or three come, you know, come in agreement any, in any one thing, there you are in our midst, and that whatever we ask then, we have what we ask for. We know this is your perfect will. Hallelujah. And we know you've been in our midst. So you know what? I'm just going to raise my hands and thank you right now. Anybody joining with me live or on the recording, raise your hands right now. And let's thank, let's give them praise, give them thanks. We have it. We have it. It is, we have it. Hallelujah. We believe, we receive, we have it. It is done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Righteousness restored in this country. Righteousness restored through all fabrics of society throughout in, in, in the United States of America. Hallelujah. Revival hitting the land. More people, people coming in droves to the kingdom. Hallelujah. People boldly proclaiming the word. People boldly laying hands on the sick and the sick recovering. Hallelujah. People boldly loving one another. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The days of just pointing out, of just walking around with signs, yelling, pointing out sins, those days are over. We declare those days over. And in Jesus' name, we declare those days where we don't point at them. We get that we we get their attention and we point to Jesus. That's what this is all about. That's why we're ambassadors to the United States of America, because we're here to ensure that our interests are protected. We're here to increase our entry, the interests of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> oh boy. Woo boy. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, how you doing, Mark? Hallelujah. 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 Woo. Hallelujah. Let me just sit, let me just lay back here for a moment here. Let me just lay back here for a moment here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Well, hey, so check this out, y'all. <laughs> There's more to pray, and I'm going to be praying throughout the next 24 hours. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to be replaying this, by the way. I'm going to be replaying this. It's going to be available, but I'm also going to replay this. I'm going to you know, make sure I target people throughout these next 24 hours. And as the Lord leads, I'm going to get out here and lead people in prayer. As the Lord leads, just boom, go back out. I don't care what time it is. Hallelujah. We are at a turning point. We are at a tipping, we are, we are at a tipping point here in this land, okay? We really are literally at the point the nation is hanging in the balance. And regardless of what choices were made in the past, okay, regardless of that, this is where we are now, all right? This is where we are right now. And I believe there's at least one revival, there's at least one revi great revival left in this country before before we wrap things up here there's at least one great revival left okay there's still the glory the glory of the lord oh man we're not done you understand me we're not finished with this country we're not finished. There's a plan and a purpose for this for this country. There's a plan and a purpose for you and I to be in this country. 
It's not by accident that we're ambassadors to the United States of America. And if you and I decide that this thing, we ain't done, if you and I decide that there's still, there's still more people that can come into this kingdom, if you and I decide that righteousness can still be restored, well, guess what? We're not the only ones, all right? We can still see this happen in our lifetime. We can still do this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can still do this. And you know what? In Jesus' name, we're going to do this. It is finished. Jesus already said it is finished. The deeds of darkness is finished in Jesus' name. The curse, we declare the curse finished in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, would it be great to all of a sudden see, to see like, I don't know, wouldn't it be great to all of a sudden see like maybe Gavin Newsom? He survived the, the recall in California. Wouldn't it be great for him to come out like, you know what? I'm so glad that I survived the recall. And oh, by the way, I repent. And I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. And I confess Jesus as Lord of my life. Wouldn't that be great if he came on TV and said that? I mean, that's just one example right there. Just one example. Okay. Uh, I, that, that would be great to see all 50 governors make that proclamation. Okay. I mean, could you imagine if you're in Wisconsin, could you imagine Tony Evers all of a sudden doing a press conference all of a sudden he starts out praying in the spirit? That would be wild. That would be wild, all right? Could you imagine the mayor of Chicago, Lori Lightfoot, just getting on and said, you know, my last name is Lightfoot, but from this day forward, I'm gonna live in the light of Christ. I give my life to Jesus and I repent of everything. And from now on, I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna do things the way it's been done in Chicago for all these years, all these decades. From now on, I'm gonna I'm gonna listen to the Lord and I'm gonna I'm gonna make decisions based on that and that alone. I mean, could you just see that? Oh my lord, oh my lord, could you could could you just could you just I mean, oh, could you just imagine? Uh, you know, imagine her getting up, you know, getting up on a press conference, maybe a Friday press conference, and and look right in that camera and say, in the name of Jesus, I cast out that murder spirit. I'm gonna tell you this murder spirit to leave my city. Could you just imagine that? Oh, you know, what what a day it would be. What 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 a day it would be where you know. Uh, where it, you know, the city of Chicago wouldn't be a laughing stock on the weekends anymore. You know, what a day that would be. And I say Chicago, but that could be any city. What a day. What? Oh, my Lord. Oh, <laughs> oh my Lord. Oh, my Lord. Could you? I mean, now. Now I just got a picture. I just got a picture of Nancy Pelosi getting, you know, grabbing the gavel, hitting the gavel, and all of a sudden she starts out, breaks out with our father would chart in heaven, hallowed be that name. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, oh, oh, could you just, could you just say that? Oh my Lord. You know what? You know what? They don't have video of what happens when the Supreme Court is in session. Okay. They don't have video of what happens in the Supreme Court <laughs> when the Supreme Court's in session. Okay. But could you just see? I've just seen it now. I've just seen all these nine justices on the Supreme Court. Okay. Imagine this. You got the chief justice in the middle. You got four justices on one side, four on the other side. Some are men, some are women. Some were appointed by Barack Obama. Some were appointed by George Bush. Some was appointed by Donald Trump. But, you know, some might have been appointed in previous whatever. But it doesn't matter. Could you just see all oh, nine of these justices? There you sitting there waiting to hear a case. And they're opening up their Bibles. They open up their Bibles. 
<laughs> they'll listen to arguments and they'll open up the Bibles. Uh huh, uh huh. And then they make their ruling. They have the Bibles right there, and they have they have their Bibles and what and what and a bookmark that they have is a little thing that has the United States Constitution. Oh my lord. <laughs> Oh boy. Uh, yo, know, it's NFL football season. People are gathering, people plan the whole day. NFL football. They get out, they wake up early in the morning. They may sleep in an hour at the most. Sometimes they go to church service and they clock watching. Sometimes they're not. Church services planning their service times around the football. But could you just imagine? Oh boy, could you just imagine a uh, uh, revival hitting the church to the point where ain't nobody try, hey, hey, people forget that football even exists? <laughs> and what about the what about the people that don't go? They're planning their day around football, and all of a sudden they turn on their game and revival is hit. They, you know. We see we, we see camera shots of both teams praying before the games. Hallelujah. Man, it's you know, we see people, whether they sing the anthem or not, they all of a sudden want to break out an amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. Oh, I'm just going wild right here. I'm just figuring out what revival looks like. Hallelujah. I've heard, I've heard of the old days. I've heard of revivals in the past where the bars closed down. Oh my lord. All these bars, all these liquor stores, you know, some of these adult shops, okay? Yeah, yo, know, locking their doors. They got the uh, they got the wood on the they got the, the plywood on the on the windows because don't nobody want to be messing with them anymore. Hallelujah. What about what about these psychic places? You know, reading these tarot cards and this stinky reeky, whatever all that stuff is. Whatever, whatever all that stuff is. Uh, <laughs> that's right. Oh, well, Miami Heat, Miami Fire, not Miami Vice. That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh, listen. Uh, uh, you got to get a picture of what revival looks like. You really got to get a picture of what revival looks like. Oh. <laughs> Boy, victory is here. Victory is here. Oh, man. Woo. <laughs> Hey, by the way, yeah, 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 I'm posting that. Let me get that on there, Vicky. Let me get that on there. Let's see. Let's see. click this says show. Okay. And in a moment, in a moment, your comment is going all over. Let's see. One, two, three. Come on. Come on. There it is. Revival takeover. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Ephesians 3.20, Ephesians 3.20, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, all that we can ever ask for, hope, or imagine. Woo! Man. <laughs> we imagine this right now. We imagine this right now. And he does exceedingly, abundantly. Okay? Wow. Thank you, Lord. This is going to happen. This is going to happen, y'all. We have it. We have it. I know my Father in heaven. I know my Lord. We got this. Hallelujah. And you know something? Traditionally, traditionally, when they when when the Jews celebrate Yom Kippur, you know they do it 24 hours, and then right after that, they immediately go into celebration. Because the sins were forgiven for a year. Do you, I'm bursting out right now. Hallelujah. We just got done praying. Because you know what? You know what? We're supposed to believe we receive before we see what we before we see what we have. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By faith, we understand 
that, that the worlds of old were framed by the word of God. We understand that the world's formed by the spoken word, and we are created in the image of the uh, 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 of our creator. Okay, he speaks things into existence. He calls things that are not as though they were, and we have the fullness of deity living inside of us, according to Colossians two. We have the fullness of deity living inside of us. So we have the authority, we have the responsibility, we have the power to speak the world, our world into existence. This earth right now, we're in charge of this world. We speak, you know, speak it into existence. All right, revival take over. Okay, let me put this up here because David, David J. Detman Jr. has put up some words to speak in existence. Milwaukee Northside on fire for God. Breaking news, no one shot and everyone hugging. People joining hands in the prayers, not gains and rights. What's going on? I speak that in Jesus' name. That, that I speak that in existence right now. Not just the Milwaukee Northside, but Milwaukee, period. Milwaukee, period. You know what? If you're in agreement, whether or not you're watching this live or after the fact, if you're in agreement, drop your city. You're in agreement with this with, with this right here, with, with what, what, what my man David just put up. Drop your city in the comment. And you know what? I'm going to be, I'm just going to drop, start dropping cities also in, 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 in agreement here. Let's see, I'm going to drop in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Boom. All right. Um, drop your city in there. Okay. But you know what? You don't have to live in that city to drop it in there. Okay. I mean, whatever city comes to mind. Okay. I've dropped, I'll just drop, you know, you know, Chicago. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo wee. All right. That's right. People on the personal page, uh, my personal page can't, you know, can't see this. Um, so here, wait a minute. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 So I dropped in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I dropped in Chicago, Illinois. Praise the Lord. If you're watching on my personal page, you might not see this, but go ahead and drop the city in there. Um, but if you watch on the other platforms, you'll see it. Yeah. Detroit. Detroit. Ha ha. Detroit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I see Ottawa in there. Okay. Detroit. No, oh, definitely Detroit. Praise the Lord. Speak all, oh man, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here, let me let me type, let me type this in here. Drop your city in the comments. Uh uh if you're uh standing if you're in agreement with re revival okay yeah I, 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 better, I better put that I better put that in there yeah I better put that in there let me um let me drop that right there there and I'm just saying drop your city because because David started with Milwaukee. Since David started with Milwaukee, we're gonna, we're gonna go right along. And once again, I don't care. I don't care if you live in the city or not. Maybe you grew up in the city. Drop your town in there. That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. This fire isn't going from the whole world. This fire is definitely this fire is definitely consuming consuming sinful sacrifices in you know, uh, in this country. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, happy day. Happy day. Happy day. When you're in vic walking to victory. Hallelujah. Woo. Oh, okay. Let me see here. See, this is how. Okay, you see right there. Drop your city in the comments. You're in agreement with revival. Now, this is. This is how I started to, to say that because up here, okay, up here, this is what started right here, okay? 
this is what started. Yo, you know, my man David's in the flow, folks. My man David is in the flow. He is flowing right now. So, I mean, calling things out. We're speaking this world into existence. He started with that. So that's what led me to do what I said as far as dropping the city. So I dropped in a couple of cities. All right. I'm just taking you through the timeline here. Um, you know, I dropped in a couple of cities. You know, I dropped in, oh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. All right. And the cities that, you know, that's the areas too, surrounding areas also. You know, of course, I had to drop in Chicago, Illinois, especially since we got since we got Laura, Laura Lightfoot casting you know, casting casting off spirits in, in, in Chicago. <laughs> okay, and then and then David goes with this Detroit. Oh boy, oh boy. There's been a restoration of sorts in Detroit. They revival, yes. Definitely revival. So then I go with I go with this right there. And then this is what David does here. Whoop. Ah, we got some cities. Definitely New York. New York, New York for Jesus. Thank you. Portland for Jesus. Thank you. Native land. Wait a minute. David, were you born in Portland or were you born in Memphis? Because you said native land. Or you talk, or you talk about. Yeah, whatever. I'm in agreement there. Utah, San Francisco, Mississippi. Thank you. Yeah, keep dropping them in. Keep, you know, keep dropping in while we're still alive. Keep dropping it in. And, you know, I said cities, but you know what? This is for the whole world. This is for the whole world. So, you know, why not? Why not the whole continent of Asia, including China, especially all the persecuted believers in, in, in you know, in, in, uh, in uh, China? And in uh, and in any of these other Asian a Asian countries, I speak revival. I speak freedom in, in in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Satan, your work over them is finished. It is finished. Take your hands off of my brothers and sisters over there right now, in Jesus' name. Canada, Hawaii, Alaska. Okay. So, okay, you talk about the native reservations. All right, I'm in agreement. Revival in the native reservations also. And uh let's see. Australia, Norway, Scotland, Romania, Germany, Amsterdam, Italy. Well, yeah, man. We live, keep going. We might as well keep going. You know, why stop there? When we have our, our neighbors to the south, Mexico, and we have Spain, which is in the continent of Europe, and definitely and de you know, definitely Africa, the cradle of civilization. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Revival hitting this country, revival hitting this land. Oh my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. All right. I'm gonna go right now. I'm about to go in a couple of minutes. Okay, in England. Yep, I heard you. I heard you. England, England. I've always wanted to, you know, maybe I might lear learn the British accent. I've always was fascinated with the, with, you know, with the British accent. And yes, continue revival in Russia. Yeah, the Lord's been doing the mighty work, a uh, mighty work in Russia. Yes, definitely, the Lord's been doing the mighty work in Russia. Of course, you're not going to hear the mainstream media to, uh, tell you that. Okay. Okay. Um, but uh, you know what? Let me see. Let me see here. Maybe I can do this here. Maybe I can go. Okay. It's going to go live right there still. Um, maybe I can do this and, and, uh, and, uh, no, I don't want to do that. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get an event. I've already put the promo out of the event. But uh um I'm trying to get the event out here on this uh on this uh uh live stream. So let's see here. Let's see here. Copy link. 
Boom. 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 Okay, just bear with me, please. There we go. Oh, I just saw it. Minnesota. Minnesota. And Minnesota. Minnesota. Okay. So, oh, yes. Definitely. Iran, Iraq, the Middle East, India. Yes. Oh. Satan, take your hands off the off of the persecuted believers, not only in Asia, not only in Africa, but Iran, Iraq, the entire Middle East, and India, and Pakistan, in Jesus' name. Your work over them, it is finished. Take your hands off of them. Take your hands off of the government. And I proclaim revival in the land there. Now, all these all, uh, ministering spirits, I send you right now in Jesus' name to bring to 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 bring forth the revival in all in, all over the world in, in, in this country and all over the world in Jesus name hallelujah hallelujah so let me uh let me uh uh uh, uh put this right here now that right there that right there is a uh, is a link to an event I posted on, on, on Facebook, okay, that's what that is, and um, and uh, you know that event is the uh, celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Booths, also known as Sukkot, S U K K O T. All right, so that starts Monday night. Uh, join me for that, please. I'll probably update the description for all the times that I'm that I plan on broadcasting. But we're going to celebrate, and it's it's going to be about love. And I'm going I'm going to launch Love Overcomes Everything during that. So be stay tuned, okay? Stay tuned, definitely. And you know what? We've been talking about different the countries, our country, different cities, but. This one's personal. This one is probably the most personal of all to me. Because it was in West Bend. I experienced revival in my life in 1995 in West Bend. Father's Day, 1995, June 17th. That's when I experienced revival in my life. And then, you know... I was excited and all that stuff, you know, sharing all over. I mean, I was just working at a part-time job. I was, Kentucky Fried Chicken. I don't know. Hey, David, is Kentucky Fried Chicken still up on Washington Street in West Bend? Um, maybe if you know, you could you 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 could put that up there. But I remember, I remember walking to a part-time job, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Walk, you know, I believe it was on Washington Street in West Bend. Because I was living actually in the old Barton Village, the north part of West Bend. Um, you know, at that, you know, at that time. And I would walk downtown. Okay. But it was there that I experienced revival in my life. Okay. It was there that I wholeheartedly started started walking, walking with walking with the Lord, walking with Christ. And I was going on a little bit. And I and I remember, <laughs> is it still the yes yuck? Okay, <laughs> I remember. I remember uh, about a month later or something like that. I decided to go on a three day fast, and then it's like you know what, Lord, uh, I'm not. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep fasting until I want, lead someone to the Lord, and then. And then I remember the young lady. Her name was Trisha. Hallelujah. And then Trisha introduced, you know, introduced me to my man David right here. And you know, right from the get go, right from the get go, right from the get go, uh, you know, David, I gotta tell you, right from the get go, this. You know, 
Uh, no, that was later on. That was later on. Yes, that, that 40 days was later on. But I'm talking about like right at the start here. I remember when David received the Lord. Okay, I remember that because this is what I remember. Because I remember reading Romans 10 and like verses 8 through 13. Okay, and when he and when he prayed and gave his life to Christ, I remember like, so how do you know you're born again or whatever? And I remember the answer. I remember the answer. Okay. And yeah, yeah, much, much love to you, brother. Much love to you. But I remember when I said, so, you know, he basically, he basically said that he knew he was saved after he prayed, not because he felt something inside, but he says, because that's what it said in the, in the Bible. And that's what I believe to be true. He based it, he based his faith on the word from day one, moment one. And that's what real faith is. That's basic faith, that's elemental faith, that's childlike faith, and that's the faith we're supposed to have. The same faith that gets you into the kingdom, that same faith that gets you into the kingdom is the same faith where you how you appropriate everything in life. Hey, brother, do what you got to do, okay? Do what you got to do, all right? You're loved. You know I love you. You know the real ones love you. Hallelujah. That's real faith. And I'm going to tell you something. People that are operating in childlike faith and real faith, those are the ones that are most dangerous. Those are the ones that pose the biggest threat to the kingdom of darkness. And those are the ones that are really going to be attacked in all various different ways. But you know what? There is never a temptation too strong that we can't overcome. Sometimes we might have to take the test over and over again. But we're gonna do this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whoo, how you doing, Stanley? Praise the Lord. How you doing? So, that's where we are. That's where we are. Hallelujah. Now, people that celebrate the old ways, they fast for 24 hours. And, you know, you know, I, mm, I've been fasting for a few, yo, know, for a few days. Um, but man, you got the victory. You understand? When you know your prayer has been answered, you got the victory. When you know the Lord, the, the Lord hears you, you got the victory. Okay, this is the confidence that we have. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And we know that if he hears us, we have what we ask for. Well, guess what? I know that we prayed the perfect will of God concerning the United States of America. I know that we prayed the perfect will of God concerning the believers in the in, in, in same country here. Okay? I know that. I know it was in his perfect will for us to repent corporately as a body of Christ and standing in the gap for the United States of America. I know that's in his perfect will. So therefore I know that he heard us. He heard us here. He heard us in congregations all over, in person, 
and our mind, he heard us. And we have what we ask. So we got the victory. Now, when they were celebrating in the Old Testament, it was a 24-hour thing. They had to wait for the entire 24 hours. But you know, their high priest had to, you know, had to have his sins covered before he could enter into the Holy of Holies. But our high priest, it ain't no covering. It's cleansing. Hallelujah. You know, just like he removed the offense from the world, just like the scapegoat on the Day of Atonement ran off into the wilderness with the offense on Israel, over Israel. But this work that the high priest done isn't just a mere day of atonement. It's an eternal cleansing. Now, if you're led to fast for the, for the, for the entire day, do it. You got to do as the Lord leads you. But if you're not led to fast for the entire day, hey, don't do it. Because you know what? Before Jesus came, these holy days were celebrated one way. And Yom Kippur is the holiest day on the uh, Hebrew calendar, on the biblical calendar, if you will. All right? But since that day has already been fulfilled, our high priest already did what he had to do. He already presented this the sacrifice himself. It's already been accepted. Well, guess what? He said it is finished. It is finished. It is finished. When we celebrate the Day of Atonement, we're, it's not that we celebrate the Day of Atonement, per se, as they did then. It's that we celebrate it. We celebrate the cleansing daily. Daily. This is something that we get to celebrate daily. It's not just one person in, 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 in the presence of our Heavenly Father. No, you and I. In the presence of our Heavenly Father. How great is that? Hallelujah. How great is that? This is so bad. This is so liberating. You know, I've been fasting the past few days, and I'm going to talk about that, you know, the, in these days of all, because there's been some major things that have, you know, that that uh that uh I've been delivered from that you know been finally cleansed from hallelujah been some major things but you know what it's finished it's finished hallelujah well y'all I don't know what to say now Okay. Um, you know, whatever the Lord leads you to do, do. Okay. And, you know, as far as I go, if that means I'm probably going to get back on here. Okay. You know, I might rerun this. I probably will. I might even get back on here. You know, if the Lord leads me to do some other praying, who knows? Okay. Um, but if you watch this live right now, if I happen to rerun this tomorrow morning, hey, watch it again. Okay. Oh, praise, praise your Lord. That's what we're here for, brother. That's what we're here for, David. So, hey. You got your prayer answered. We got our prayer answered. Celebrate. 
okay? If he leads you to pray, continue praying, okay? If he leads you to celebrate, celebrate. He'll lead us to do both. <laughs> Which actually, what makes today different than any other day for us? Because there, Yom Kippur was the whole, considered the holiest day on that calendar. With us, with us, every day is the most holiest day. Every day. That's a beautiful thing. Hallelujah. That is such a beautiful thing. Well, hey, I'm going to let you go. Okay? I'm going to get off of here. You know. Um, and we'll just figure out from here. Um, especially if you're on my personal page, uh, I, uh, check out the link that I dropped there. Especially if you're on my personal page. Um, that's the event for the Sukkot, the last fe major feast of the uh, 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 of the year. Hallelujah! Elijah, Francis, Morgan, see the yeah, you know what? I, okay, okay, all right. Let me just put this on here to end this. Okay, we lift up these are these are David's children right here. These are David's sons. And we lift them up in, in, the, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you that they that 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 they achieve, they walk out the perfect will in their lives. Hallelujah. That they are that they are bold, that they walk out in boldness in, in, in the things of the Lord. Hallelujah. And we just pray your perfect will to manifest in their lives. Hallelujah. Perfect will in every area including relationships not only including relationships especially relationships hallelujah and we keep and we lift up the daddy david right there in jesus name and just thank just plead the blood of jesus over the entire family to just thank you i just thank you for both emboldening him for strengthening him for comforting him and cause him to be not the very best dad that he can be, but the dad that you need him to be. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you for, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Woo! Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 All right. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> All right. Well, hey, I love y'all. I'm really going to check out here. We'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. If I, if I go live again in the next 24 hours, who knows? I don't even know. But I do know I got that event planned for, you know, for the Feast of Booths, Feast of Tabernacles, um, Sukkot, that's starting on the, that's starting on the 15th. Um, I got, I, I, I got the event posted and ad advertised on my Overcomers Media Facebook page. It's going out all, it's gone out all over. Um, I'll probably have a broadcast link, you know, going out probably as a reminder. So, you know, let's just do this, okay? Let's just do this. All right. Well, I thank I, I thank you for joining in, whether you joined in with me live or whether you are joining in on the recording. Okay? All right. Well, hey, I love you. I'm Jubilee James, the Overcomer, brother. <laughs> I'll return to you at the appointed time. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. Go get us. All right. All right. All right. Okay, y'all, y'all, you that's just what he said right there. You know what? I received that right now. You know what? I received that right now. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh boy. What's it say?
said, First Chronicles 2020, believe on the Lord God, believe on the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. I believe, I believe in the prophet right there. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. All right, my man. Love you, David. Love you, Vicky. Oh, boy. And yes, I'll leave with this. Everybody, we'll see you at the appointed time. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, happy day. Whew.